because of the hope and faith of people like you who witness the life message with love and peace and true empathy for the human person, um, Abby became our hero. And she walked out of Planned Parenthood and she started, uh, she founded, and she's the CEO of And Then There Were None. So just welcome Abby Johnson. Thank you guys. <laughs> okay, stop it. Stop it, stop it. Well, am I rounding this thing out? Is that my job? Close it out? Am I the closer? Um, I am pregnant. Um, I didn't just like have too much lunch. Uh, I got two babies in here. And uh, I, this is baby six and seven. So my, my husband and I are officially breeders. Uh, I'm proud of it. Uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm so glad to be here. And uh, so I'll tell you a little bit about this because, well, it's just a fun story. So we had five kids. Our youngest son is adopted. Um, and uh, we, my husband and I decided, like, well, we should, my husband said, we should round it out to six. <laughs> and I said, okay. So <clears throat> I went to, uh, so my husband and I went to uh, Mother Teresa's canonization. And, um, <laughs> and we prayed and we said, oh, you know, uh, it'd be really awesome, God. Um, if, uh, I mean, I don't want to get into too TMI here, but, um, be really God, it'd be really cool if like it worked out while we were in Rome, right? Like when in Rome, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, we came back and, uh, and we found out that it had worked. <laughs> and so, but we thought just, you know, just one baby, you know, just one. And uh, rounding it out, right? And so I went to, uh, I went to my doctor and my friend who's the RDMS there, does the ultrasounds at my doctor's office. She said, okay, well, are you ready to see your babies? And I said, yes. Or she said, you ready to see your baby? Baby. And I said, yes. And so um, I'm laying there on the table. And they have like a huge, like 60-inch TV, right, that's on the screen so you can see really well. And so she has a little, little ultrasound, and she puts it on my belly. And I went, oh, crap. <laughs> and she, she picked it up really fast, and she said, did you see that? <laughs> and I said, yes. And she said, are you ready to see it again? <laughs> and I said, only if there's one in there this time. <laughs> and so <laughs> she said, I don't think it works like that. So, um, <laughs> so she uh, put it back on. And my husband, Doug, is like, what's going on? Like, he doesn't know what's going on. And so I, I looked back and I said, there's two in there. And he, like, became the giddiest man I've ever seen in my life. He started laughing like Paul Borchard. Um, 
<laughs> he, was, he was so excited, and, uh, and I was having a panic attack uh, sitting on the thing, and so I was finally like, can you stop being so excited and join me here, like, in this, in this moment of stress that I'm having, and, um, and so, anyway, he was so excited, and so then, I, you know, as, as the realization sort of hits me, like, oh my god, I think this is really happening, I'm having two, um, I just completely lost it, I was just so overwhelmed, I was like, I don't do this, I don't do two at a time, I do one at a time, and I do that really well, and that's what I want to do, and, um, and my, and so my doctor and my husband, like, on each side of me, they're like, it's going to be okay. You can do it. You can do it. And I thought that in that moment, like, just how beautiful it was um, that I was in a place that affirmed and supported life. And then I thought, what would this be like for, I mean, I'm 36 years old, so, like, I'm sort of old, and I was having, like, this moment of crisis, right? I'm married, I work, we've got tons of other kids, like, we're stable, but in that moment, I was having a crisis, and so then I, I started thinking, like, wow, and I had so much support right there in that moment, and I just thought, what would this be like, you know, for an 18-year-old girl, or a 20-year-old girl who finds out, you know, she's ha- you know, well, she's having twins or she's pregnant or whatever, and she doesn't have that same support around her. And I just realized then that's why what we're doing is so important. Because we're not only just building a culture around us with our friends and everything like that, but we are truly, we're changing the medical institution we're changing how doctors see the unborn. We're, we're really, it's, it, it really is a cultural change that we're trying to make. And for a long time in the pro-life movement, I think that there was a, a lot of, uh, a lot of thinking, there was a lot of people that thought, you know, there are some people who are just too far gone. You know, there's some people in this society, we're just never going to change their mind. It's never going to happen. And then I came along, and people that knew me that had prayed outside of my clinic, they for sure were like, well, this is a shocker. Because I was not like a nice abortion clinic director. (laughs) Like, I wasn't like, thanks guys for being out on the sidewalk, you know. And I, I, I was sometimes hateful, and I mocked them and, and all of this, but here I was, and, and here I was, able to have this conversion experience because of the power of Christ. And so I thought, surely there's other people out there who, who want to have this same experience, who are, who are primed and ready to have this same experience, um, but nobody's given them the opportunity because everybody looks at them and says, it's not possible, They're too far gone. It's not going to happen. And so for several years, I sort of stood alone, right, as this this abortion clinic director who who had left and had this conversion, and people thought, well, you know, yeah, she's one, you know. It's an isolated incident, as Planned Parenthood says. Just one person. And so four years ago, we started, and then there were none, and we uh, worked to get abortion clinic workers out of the industry, and for so long, I sort of stood on my own, and now I stand with 330 other abortion clinic workers who have left the industry. You want to meet one? Annette, come on. Here, come down. Whatever. <laughs> they love you. They love you. <laughs> <laughs> 
So this is Annette. And uh, doesn't she have like the coolest hair? You think I could pull that off? <laughs> She's like, stop it, white girl. Um, so Annette ran an abortion clinic like me. She was a director. And uh, she came out. Uh, when did you leave? May. May of this year. May of last year. May, I mean, last year. <laughs> We're not time traveling in the future. May, May of 2016. So uh, she, she left May of 2016. And um, she's got an interesting story about how she heard about us. So why don't you tell them that story? So my story is very, very interesting. Um, as I was walking out of the clinic one day to go to my vehicle, um, and I would never park in the Planned Parenthood parking lot. I was always parked across the street in a bank parking lot. And um, one of the protesters had photocopied some cards for, and then there were none, and had literally put them all around my vehicle. If we don't condone that. Yeah. So I'm not sure who it was, but not just one in the windshield. But There's like a lot, right? Yeah, literally all the way around, down the windows on the side, down the back and around, and yeah. So I was really annoyed. I was like, okay, I've had these people trespassed because they're praying, and now they're like vandalizing my car. Um, and so I'm, you know, picking them off, and I come back in the building, and then my boss, who was there, says, you're, you're going to throw those away, right? And I being the defiant person that I am, said, sure. And I threw them all away except for one. Um, sorry. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, so it was about two months later that I continued to work there and I was really struggling with working there, but I didn't realize why I was struggling. Um, and senior leadership had called me into the office one day and said, we need to talk to you. And I just had this really weird feeling. And they had their little, little folders, you know, folded up. I couldn't see what was in it. And so they say to me, you know, you just really don't fit in here. And my response was, you know what, you're right, I don't. And I handed in my keys and my badge, and I've not looked back since. And when she came to us, she said she called us on, yes. we have a hotline that's answered 24 hours a day because a crisis doesn't happen between eight and five. Uh, and so we have, um, were you the one that was posting on my Twitter about wanting to get a picture? Oh, okay, somebody that looks like you. <gasps> okay. Yeah. Well, whoever looks like this girl that was wanting to get a picture, I'm here now. Um, for sure, we'll get a picture later. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so... Uh, we, uh, so we have a hotline that's 24 hours a day that we answer. Sorry, my belly is really itchy. <laughs> I scratch it without even knowing I'm doing it. It's like a man. Anyway, um, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm never being asked to speak here again. Um, So anyway, um, so we have this hotline, and uh, and so Annette called, and when she was first talking to us, and all of our clients that come to us, they get assigned a client manager, and um, so when she was first talking to us, she said, look, I just want to leave my job and put this in the past, and um, I don't ever want to speak out or tell my story or anything like that, but I believe that when you become so convicted on something as important as this issue, the Holy Spirit puts inside of you an urgency to speak out. And that's what's happened to Annette. And um, yesterday at the March for Life, she just looked at me and said, this is my purpose. This is what I'm supposed to do. 
Guys, this is conversion in real life. This, somebody, some obnoxious body in North Carolina, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, <laughs> made copies of all of those cards and put them on her car. And that was what she needed. The Holy Spirit said, this is what you do to this woman's car. It's going to make her annoyed and she's going to reach out. <laughs> and they, and so they went through with that and they did that. And that one person, guys, that one person worked in her life, even though they didn't know that was going to happen and changed her life. Yesterday, we had, uh, we had like 10 former abortion clinic workers with us yesterday at the march. And uh, one of the gals that was with us was from Virginia. And uh, Sean here? No, he's not. He's not. Dang. Um, so this, this guy, Sean, this young man, Sean, who would, he would go out in front of that clinic and he would pray and reach out to these workers all the time. And yesterday a gal that he had reached out to over and over and over again got to meet him on this side of the fence for the first time. <laughs> Guys, you have the power to make a difference. Sometimes, that, sometimes we feel really small in this movement and we think, you know, uh, God, there's a million abortions taking place every year. Like, okay, so what? It, so what if I help, you know, one person leave the abortion industry? So what if one person turns around from the abortion clinic? So what if one person becomes, you know, pro-life that I talk to on my campus? Like, so what? It's one person. But guys, look at what one person can do. This is your calling. There's, there's nothing more important than what we do in this movement. I mean, that's it. There's nothing more important. Because, I, you know, I tell people, there were people that stood outside of my clinic, you know, every day and reached out to me. And if you asked them, if you said, hey, guys, you know, um, you were out there for eight years, you know, and let's, let's just pretend that in those eight years, they never, they never saved one baby. No woman ever turned around and chose life. You know, if you, if you ask them, if you said, hey, look, in that eight years, you know, all you get, all you get is Abby Johnson, like, that's it? No babies? Like, nothing? That seems like a bummer. I, like, I think if you ask them, like, was that even worth it? Like I've never asked, but I'm like 99% sure they would say, yeah, it was worth it. Because, you know, it's not just about saving the physical lives of babies, but we're in this to save eternal lives as well. Hmm? I had lost my mind from working in this industry. Tell them, like, about your drinking and stuff, if you want to. Um, <clears throat> when I was working in the abortion clinic, um, we would work six days a week, and literally we would end every abortion day um, with drinking. We would say we were going to have a meeting after work, and that was our little inside joke, and I was literally drinking two big big bottles of wine every day. Like this industry is so damaging, not just to babies, but to the women that go in, to the women that work there, to the fathers who are left behind. This industry is so damaging. And, and I have a friend who's like this amazing evangelist. Her name is Pam. She's like telling everybody about Jesus all the time. And, uh, it's really cute. And I, 
And I'm like, Pam, you're so good at that. Like, you're so good at just like sharing your faith and telling everybody you know, like, about Christ. And like, how do you, like, how do you do that? Like, how? And she said, Abby, this is like Jesus Christ is the best thing in my life. And she said, like, now that I have that truth, I I have to share it with everybody else. It's like if you went to Target or I don't know, some of you maybe boycotting Target or wherever you went. <laughs> Um, like if you went, if you went to somewhere, your favorite store, what's your favorite store? Walmart. Walmart. (laughs) I mean, you're poor. So it's, once you get out of college, you'll go to Target. Um, (laughs) Okay. Let's say you're okay, let's say you're shopping at Walmart and you find out that they have like the best flipping deal on something. And you're like, oh man, I gotta tell all my friends. What's something you would really want? Bluebell? Bluebell. Bluebell, yeah. Okay, let's find let's let's pretend that they had um like the best deal on ice cream. And, and you, yeah, and you were like, y'all, if you get this coupon, you can get this, like, your favorite ice cream for 25 cents. Like, would you go tell your friends, like, about this deal? No, because you'd buy it all. <laughs> Whatever, you get what I'm saying. Like... Like, you would be, like, hyped up. Like, I got to tell my friend about this deal, about what's going on, about something that's going to help benefit them. And like, we have this truth inside of us through Christ and through this movement, through the pro-life movement. We have this truth. Guys, we've got to be excited about sharing that. Like, don't be... We have something so real. Don't keep that inside. Like, get it out. Tell other people because it's changing lives, physical lives and eternal life. Nothing more important than those two things. So keep up the good work. Keep doing what you're doing. Be encouraged. Be excited for life. Share with everybody that you know this message, this truth that you have. Don't be timid. Just shout it out. People need to know. And your life, your witness, can change the life of others. So thank you all. Thank you for welcoming Annette.